Howdy, folks. Welcome to the brewery. On a dreary Sunday afternoon. Ah, I'm just mashing in on what's going to be just a basic hazy to a pale ale. Uh, then I'm going to run some hop. Oh, I'm going to play around some hops. I've got um, some Luminosa and some Super Deli that uh, Kevin Bristol sent me. Um, thumbs up with the, the hopping mechanism for that. Uh, so I've just got a, uh, a grain mix here, which I'll sit down we'll talk about shortly. Um, so I'm basically just going to brew up a basic pail uh, and then dry hop between the super delicate and the luminosa. Um, so start now on this base beer. So I'm mashing, mashing in. So full volume, oh not full volume, full batch, 23 litre. Uh, I've got 20 about 22 litres in in the robo brew. I'm mashing in uh, 4.91 kilos of grain. Uh, using the uh, the pro the pro ball pipe, uh, which has been working good in the last on the I think it's what the third batch now that I've used it, so hoping she'll still be good. Yeah, so 65 degree mashing, um, was it fairly basic, but I'll get this in. I'll uh, give this. 10 minutes to sit and settle before I get the pump going. And uh, while it's doing that, if you want to join me over at the table, uh, we'll have a little bit of a chat about um, what's actually going in here. Done underway. Uh, I said, yeah, I'm looking to brew a fairly simple batch that I want to play around with just dry hopping the Super Delic and the Luminosa just to see how they go. So I'm just brewing up a fairly simple beer. And what I'm using, um, it's a grain mix. Um, came about from, uh, well, I've got transferred a lot of bags, a lot of sacks into um, my grain buckets and stuff a while back um, and I had like parts of bags left over so I put it all, put it all together because um, basically I looked at it and thought that's probably not a bad mix for a pale ale, like a pale ale maybe something a bit hazy so what it is um, the actual mix is it's 41.9% Voyager unmodified or under modified Pilsner um, 8.4% Voyager Valoria and 18.2% Voyager Compass. That's the base. Uh, so free base malts, 12.1% yeah, malted wheat and 19.4% malted oats. Um, worked out in the end, I think I had about 10.5 kilos all up. So um, I looked at the, at the ratio today and I thought, that's probably not a bad little base. Um, yeah, there's 20, what was it, 31, about 31 with a bit percentage from the malt and the wheat, um, the oats and the wheat. Uh, so that's a nice number for a bit of a hazy. That's going to be a nice number for a, for a pale type of malt. Um, so going with that. So I've got, I said, 4.91 kilos. Uh, looking for an original gravity of 10.43 uh, so I'm looking for a beer that's going to be about 4.3% ABV um, so just a lightish you know, easy drink of beer nothing um, too heavy 
Uh, I've only got a bit of a guess on the colour because I haven't been able to... Uh, if I sat down and actually put the, each individual grain in separately, um, I put a good... But I actually created a, its own listing on, 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 brew, on brew father. Um, so... Just to, make, just to make wildlife easier, so I'm not exactly sure what the colour is going to be. Um, but it's going to be in that, like, like in that nice range that I like, that should work quite nicely. Um, so I'm mashing that at 65 degrees for 60 minutes, uh, and then I'll then raise it to 75 for 20. Simple, uh, nice. I'm not mucking around, I don't want to, I'm not playing around with the base, because the base really doesn't matter that much. Like I'm interested because I'm, I'm, I'm keen to see how that malt mix goes, um, but it's the hopping that's the big thing. So this base, I'm using um, Citra at 20 minutes in the boil, uh, about 15 IBU, um, then five IBUs of Citra and Eldorado at 10 minutes, uh, then a 15 minute hop stand at 85 degrees, um, with another two IBU of Citra and Eldorado, um, and that'll be it. That's going to get chilled. Uh, that will get split, and two fermenters. Uh, I will then dry hop both fermenters, or the individual fermenters, on day three and day six um, with 15 grams of fever hop. So. Um, that's so they're both going to get a double dry hop. Um, it's a uh, have I got? I haven't got the grams. So it's thirty. It's about twelve. About two and a half grams a litre um, on the dry hop. So I said it's it's not a not a big dry hop burning stretch, um, but I think it's going to be enough to get an idea of what the individual hop is bringing to the pitcher. Ideally, I would have brought a little bit more of the hop into uh, the whirlpool, uh, but uh, that would have meant doing two separate, two separate, but um, at least two separate boils, which I've, I've just been pushed for time and I just haven't got time to do. So I think this is going to work well enough. And I did promise a couple of Patreons uh, it's the balance of the super delicate and the luminosa. Um, so I was con conscious of making sure I had enough of those hops to actually send out because um, that's six months' price. So, um, yeah, so that's where she is. I've treated the water um, fairly chloride heavy, so pushing more to a New England sort of a, sort of a level. Um, I've upped the, up the lactic a little bit uh, again with um, trying to push that pH level down a little bit um i've got to get a check on that um shortly when i get this research going i'll check how the um ph is and see whether i need to adjust it um so it's just a little bit the lactic's a little bit higher than i would normally go but not a lot um and i push just a little bit of salt just to keep the um nice mineral edge uh underneath it as well so at the end of the day I still want to be able to make, I'm still making sure I've got a beer that I'm going to be able to drink. Um, I think this, and I think this is going to be a really nice, beautiful, good drinker through into summer. But anyway, that's a, um, we'll come back and have a, have a look as we're getting through the mash at different stages. But for now, um, I'm going to go and get the research happening. Good. 
narrow banded VH strip. See this will uh, anything interesting. It still seems to be a little bit high. I want to pull the um, pH meter out and get a proper reading. Right, uh, 60 minutes in. Just raised temperature on the uh, Robo Brew to 75 for mash out. Uh, Going to run half an hour, so it'll, it'll take seven or eight minutes to get to get to there. So we'll sit there for a good 20 minutes. Uh, then we'll sparge up. Uh, just checked mid mash pH uh, sitting about 5.28, uh, so that's good. Uh, happy with that. Things looking good. Um, I might sneak a uh, gravity check to see how we go. I'll uh, let you know how that's travelling when we do the um, get the sparge on. Right, uh, that's mash complete. We are ready to sparge. Mash ran absolutely beautiful. Yeah, no issues at all with the mash. Uh, she ran no drama. It's very, very clear. Um, it might have been a little bit cloudy from the uh, wheat and whatnot, but. Uh, that's all good. The yeast is going to do most of the work anyway. So, um, find the sparge this sucker. So, this. Oh, oh, bye -bye. That's draining a little quicker than I would have liked, but anyway, she's all good. Large water over here. I took off at the start of the mash and we'll throw the top screen in there <laughs> just to help avoid getting any channeling. So yeah, took the sparge water off this, just sat on this off to the side in uh, the 19 litre stock pot. Uh, so it's dropped temperature, but I didn't check what it is, but it's still, still warmish. Uh, but it will do the job fine. So you can see there, we're holding a decent level on the on that sparge, that's good. So while that's going, we'll get the feed on. And we'll get that coming to a boil. That's the end of the sparge water. And this is what your sparge should do if, if the grain bed's compacted and done the right thing. It should be able to hold water so it just pushes through nice and slow. Um, if you're not getting that when you're sparging, um, you're not getting good 
grain bed settling uh, compaction and that's what you do on a 3V system when you're oil roof, that's what you're looking to get. Uh, but you should get that automatically with your 3V, with your uh, recirc on your, um, yeah, on your only ones. Uh, that's good. Fifteen gram of citra, twenty minutes to go in the boil. Right, just dropped wolf lock and nutrient in at fifteen minutes, and that's uh, eight grams of citra, seven grams of El Dorado going in at ten. Right, uh, we've cooled to well, about 87, we're close enough. Let's have the Whirlpool hops. Whirlpool arm in here. Get it underway. Yeah. I hadn't noticed when I did the rest of it, I just realised I was that Um. Every hop addition for this brew is 15 grams. <laughs> That's another 8 grams of Citra, 7 grams of El Dorado. Um, so it was 15 grams at 20 minutes. Total is 15 at 10, 15 in the Whirlpool. And then both all the dry hops are 15 grams each. Um, so, yeah. I'll have to think about um, coming, up, coming up with some name around the 15. Because uh, I can't say I've ever, I don't think I've ever had a body that... <laughs> Kind of equilibrium on, on, on the hops on a brew before. But anyway, uh, so this is looking good. Got the Rabo brew set now to 85. Well, for long, let this go for 15 minutes. Right, uh, that's done. Need off. Pump off. Into the whirlpool. I'm gonna pull the hops out. And now, because I'm so, uh, <laughs> I'm very, very well behind on where I should be. Uh, I'm just going to air cool this, uh, which I've done the last few brews and it hasn't been any issue. But this is currently at 85, this is going to get down to 70 degrees in a couple of minutes, even with the air cooling, so that's not an issue. But I'll get the hops out just to make sure we're not getting any more bitterness out of them. And that's on. Up they go. Um, I'll run this for probably two hours. Uh, then I'll shut it off, cover it up, and just let it sit till, sit till tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow, once it's cool, I'll put in the fermenters. So, we'll have a look at that tomorrow.
Okay, cooling's done. And we transfer into two of the Dometic Blue 20s into the Juniors. 12, um, well, we'll go for 11 litres of each. Uh, there's about 23 litres in the Robo Brute. So we're on target for volume. So I'll fill these and uh, then we'll get a uh, quick hydro sample to what we're uh, finished up at. Righto, let's see what we're looking at here. Uh, that chill's come down to 21 degrees, so that's lovely. And that's looking to be about uh, 10.44, we're looking for 10.43, so um, she's right around the mark, so that's good. Happy with that. Uh, about a litre under volume. Actually, yeah, that's close to the 10.45. Maybe nudging 10.46, so it's a good leader under, so the leader top up would have got us right on target, so that's all good. Not too concerned about that. Alright, so that gives us our nice base to work from anyway. So, I'll be pitching Verdant onto onto this and fermenting at 19 degrees. Day three I'll add 15 grams of each hop to each separate fermenter and then again on day six. Um, that stage I'm pretty confident we're going to be pretty much finished our ferment uh, so I'll let it run for probably another yeah, two or three days from there uh, and then cold crash and getting packaged up. So, uh, I know we look at a month, five weeks from now, we'll be uh, looking to get the taste from this fella. So, if you got any comments or questions, stick them down the bottom, as always. Uh, cheers to all the supporters of the channel. There's links down the bottom for Patreon if you're interested. Uh, if you subscribe, thank you. If you aren't, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. But that's it. Uh, Hazy Pale. Um, we've got a nice little haze in there. I'm happy with happy with the result. So all good. Let the yeast do its thing now. Uh, Luminosa, Superdelic. So we'll, I'll see you soon. We'll see how they turn out. So let's see you in the next video. We brew and beer, drink and beer, talk and beer. Good brewing.